Hey cats, it's your mitts old man, Ed Bud here. I'm back with another running shoe yay or nay for you. This is a show where I delve into the latest running shoe releases or some forthcoming models and let you know whether I'm gonna pick them up or not for review on the channel. It's not whether I think the shoe's great or it's total trash. I won't know that until I get it on foot. But there might be a couple of models out there that I think another shoe tuber might do more justice to. As such, let's go to it. Thanks for joining me on the channel once again. We are heading towards 30,000 subscribers like an uncontrollable crazy horse. Emlyn Hughes, that's what we are, that's what we are. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications so you're notified. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. That makes a huge difference to the channel and helps us to get out there like some sort of octopus in all the different zones. No idea what I'm talking about today. Rung shoe yay or nay time, four new shoes up today, or at least ones that are gonna come out in the very near future. A real mixed bag today, shoe number one. Okay, so track spike first from Adidas. This bears a lot of resemblance to the Takumi Sen 8 and also the Adios 7. Oh, what a shoe that is. The Adi Zero Avanti TYO or TYO is a five to 10K race shoe featuring all the goodness of those two models I just discussed. The energy rods are present from the Takumi Sen 8. You can see that in the hollowed out midsole section on the outsole of the shoe, complete with that six pin spike plate. It's quite hard to say that. The back section of the upper almost looks like a complete duplication of the Adios 7 and the forefoot is very close to the Sen 8 in terms of the profile and the construction. No extra lace eyelets here. I don't understand why other models aren't incorporating those. Really works well. I remember using them on the Adios Pro original. Remember that pink one? That was one of those shoes you could put on and no one would notice you as you were running around the trading estate. But we do have a full Light Strike Pro midsole here, which looks almost like a running shoe, really, rather than a track spike. Hardly any of the heels been carved out whatsoever in this model. I've still got a pair of Dragonfly spikes that I've got hardly any miles in whatsoever, so there's no real need for me to pick up another pair of track spikes. I just don't need them. There's other people out there that will benefit more from them than me, rather than them just collecting dust here. What's the point? Though I have to be honest, the specification of these is very, very impressive. It's a nay from me on the Adidas Adi Zero Avanti tire. There's some other people out there on YouTube that will do these more justice. Shoe two. Now, this is one I'm revisiting, mainly because loads and loads of viewers have been asking me to. There's loads of interest in the Hoka Mac 5. Now, the Mac 4 was quite an interesting shoe. I didn't really like the profile of it all that much, but it ran okay. It didn't sort of blow me away by any stretch. I went for an 11 and a half in the Hoka Mac 4. I could have probably half sized down. I've noticed some Hoka shoes are just a little bit too tight in an 11. Some are absolutely huge if I go up to an 11 and a half. So there's a bit of a balancing act really. That Mac 5 has got a new midsole material in the ProFly Plus. I think that'll reduce the weight a little bit down over the already quite light Mac 4. Really is quite light in hand, this one. There's not an awful lot to it. We do seem to have the same outsole setup here. And I did see quite a lot of quick initial wear, but that seemed to level out over time. The Mountain Spring and Puffin's Beak colorway here really does speak to me. It's hitting the right buttons, and I liked the upper materials in the Mac 4. I think it's more the shape of the shoe that just felt a little bit too overbearing, like it was controlling the way I was running, perhaps. Though the lore of an improved, nimble version of that Mac 4 with a better fit could work for me, so I'm going to say it's maybe a yay, somewhere in the middle, perhaps, on the Mac 5. I'll see if I can get a good deal on them, and if I can, I might pick them up for review. Maybe if I can, I'll get the Radiant Yellow and Evening Primrose version. That seems even better quite striking to the eye. Certainly a summer shoe. It's not going to look that great if it starts to rain and there's loads of grime and muck out there. So I'm on the fence a little bit about that one. Shoe three is the Ultra Vanish Tempo. Quite an expensive gamble, this one, I've got to be honest with you guys. £175, I've only tried out one Ultra shoe in the past. 
yeah, it was pretty good, I have to be honest. Although it took me quite a while to get it, I had to change the sizes up and I bought it from like a French store, so I'm not sure I'd do that now with Brexit and all that. Striking looks with a Zoomfly SP transparent vibe in the upper and a very low sub 200 gram weight in the sample size. Now that's what I'm talking about. This one reminds me a little bit, I suppose, of the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite off the bat. I guess when you've got a zero drop shoe, you can stick loads and loads of foam in and not sort of worry about it. Yeah, why don't they do one that's just 40 millimeters of foam all the way? I think this one's 32 in the heel. By all accounts, apparently some ultra shoes aren't quite the zero drop that they make them out to be. Interesting, actually, while we're talking about drop, I have noticed recently that some Nike shoes actually seem to be slightly lower in the heel and kind of build up around the arch area a little bit more than people realise. I think it's perhaps a little trick of Nike's there to try and get a certain shoe in under 40 millimetres when it probably isn't all the way along the footbed. Have a look at some of your running shoes next time and you'll see that actually they almost raise up in that arch area. Now this one's listed as being a slim fit shoe, so that could be ideal for me. I do seem to struggle even with a narrow foot in some shoes these days. The materials around the foot are just gargantuan, but this one appears to have been made using a last that's a little bit narrower perhaps, so it could be ideal for me. Rubberized EVA rounds things off in this shoe with a very reasonable forefoot and heel coverage. I need to do a little bit more research into this Ultra shoe. It does look like something that I could perhaps utilize and get something out of. So again, I'm gonna give this a horse till somewhere in the middle. Just need a bit more information on this Ultra shoe before I pull the trigger. So a lot of cash to gamble with really. Last up today is shoe number four. Viewers have been requesting more shoes from Brooks. So how about the Ghost 15? This is a staple of the Brooks lineup, the 15th iteration already. It's utilizing their DNA Loft version 2. I do see there's a version 3 out at the moment that does have nitro infused properties. I think that's where the whole Puma and Brooks issues come from recently. And all of the advertising on Brooks website right now is about nitro infusing your run. Perhaps a more daily use shoe than anything this one. They haven't opted again for that nitro infused V3. A lot of brands have been doing that for some time now. I remember running in a nitro shoe from Brooks, what, two, three years ago now. Hyperion Tempo, fantastic shoe. They haven't seemed to have updated it at all, just new colorways, that's all. Interesting that the Ghost lineup has a 12 millimeter drop for some time, I think. That's vastly more aggressive than most of the shoes I've been running in recently. I don't know if that would cause some sort of issues. Could be a good option for those who are after the consistency of the Ghost lineup. The only changes here seem to be upper and outsole. Just think I hanker for something a little bit more intriguing, I suppose, in a running shoe if I'm going to try something out from another brand. Could be a good daily shoe, but I've got a load of other stuff in the rotation right now that I can utilize for that use case. Looks to be a good option, though, if you're a fan of this Ghost model. I think it's going to be like a October or even November release on this one, so it's some way off yet. I think doing a little bit more research that the Glycerin 20 could actually be a better model for me. I think that's been released relatively recently. So it's a nay for the Brooks Ghost 15. Okay, that's all four shoes in the yeah or nay for today. What do you make of these? Let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know if there's a shoe you particularly want me to try out in the near future. I shall consider it very carefully. Today's musical interlude comes from 2011's fantastic album from Miles Kane, The Color of the Trap. There's some absolute bangers on this album. I forgot just how good it is. It's got a really sort of grimy and old school, old fashioned production, I suppose, even though there's some loops and things utilized in there. Come Closer and Inhaler are absolute slammers. Some really good choruses on this, really nice song structures as well. Lots and lots of energy there. You can feel that Miles Kane was really putting in everything that he had. It certainly does sound like the blueprint has been used once again for from the last Shadow Puppets album, the first one. There's lots of lovely reverb to swim around in. Some really nice guitar work here too. Miles Kane uses the guitar certainly as a tool where he can change the sound of it and incorporate it in perhaps different ways that you didn't expect. 
It's a really nice smooth quality to the track, my fantasy. Now, I really like Miles Kane's vocal delivery. Bit of a overlooked album, this one. Go and check it out from 2011, Color of the Trap by Miles Kane. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. Help support the channel by hitting us with a super thanks, perhaps if you have a question that you want me to answer, or you want to become a member of the channel and help us keep the shoes flowing in for review. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.